OK, well, I guess I can uh, uh, get started while our laptop uh, reboots. Uh, so my name's John Kingsnorth, and this is uh, Alex Kaur, and we're here from the uh, University of Cambridge. Um, we've actually got a couple of alumni here. I'd ask them to put their hands up, but that would just really embarrass them. Uh, so uh, we've been implementing Civi CRM over the course of a couple of years. Uh, the university's been around for 800 years, so uh, two years is actually like really, really quick for an implementation. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think some of our IT systems actually are about 800 years old as well. So uh, uh, what we thought it might be uh, interesting to do is just step through how we've gone about uh, implementing Civi CRM over the last couple of years, uh, the order we've done it in. Um, and our slides still aren't coming up, so I'll just jump right in. <laughs> So um, the first thing we uh, started with was, well, why, why choose Civi CRM? We needed a solution, uh, one piece of software that could manage all of our uh, alumni interactions online. So events, uh, donations, um, profile updates. And before this project, we were using lots of different tools and systems uh, to do all these different things. Some third parties, some in-house bespoke systems. So the goal was to just use one system for everything. Um, so the first thing we, we wanted to tackle was event bookings. We started off with uh, we <laughs> thanks we we started off with a uh, a number of different systems like Eventbrite and some bespoke systems, um, but we decided to use Civi CRM to bring it all into one place. Your cables. Oh, okay. Um, so um, to about two years ago, in uh, early, 20, uh, early 2014, we started rolling this out for our events. Uh, we started off on some small events just to make sure everything was working and then decided to use it for our largest event, which is Alumni Festival. So that has over 1,000 attendees, and they can select from uh, 130 different event selections during the event. So that's a lot of price sets and a lot of price fields. And... Not only that, but some of the sessions are overlapping. So if you come to a 10 till 1 session, you can't come to a d another 10 till 1 session. People try to do that, but we, we don't want them to do that. <laughs> so um, with a little bit of very creative JavaScript, uh, we, we were able to stop people booking overlapping sessions and um, make some other improvements to the form so it would choose the cheapest ticket option for them, for example, um, to try and make the process a bit more user-friendly. This is still using the core Civi event module, um, just with a little bit of JavaScript to improve the usability. I say a little bit of JavaScript. Um, it's, it's a lot of JavaScript. But, um, <laughs> so now we've uh, successfully run around 45 uh, events uh, through, through Civi event, and we've had around 3,800 event registrations through Civi CRM as well, which may not be huge for some people, or maybe huge for others. But, um, it seems to be going okay, and we've had some really good feedback, especially from our events uh, people in the office who finally just have to look at one system and not their emails and six others. So following on from the uh, success of that, we're going to buy a new laptop. We, um, <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> decided to uh, tackle, what was next? Online giving. So um, we were previously using a very bespoke old crumbling uh, system for taking <coughs> online donations, which had no um, synchronization or integration with any of our other databases. It was all just coming in by email. Um, so again, we, we turned to Civi, and we migrated all of our giving opportunities into Civi CRM. We now have over 190 uh, different things people can choose to give to, um, and that's all handled through contribution pages on Civi CRM. We expose that on our, our website. We use Drupal, and we link our contribution pages to our website, so we can have pretty give online buttons, which take you straight through to the contribution pages. Um, and that's using entity reference fields. Getting a bit, don't want to get too technical, but um, it means we can bring out certain information on those pages as well if we wanted to. Maybe things like totalizers and in the future, um, counting up how much money has been given to individual things. Still nothing? Still nothing. Still nothing. 
Um, there was another statistic for that, but I can't remember it. It's on the slide. Um, so <laughs> following on from uh, events and online giving, uh, we then tackled another bespoke system, which was to handle our alumni groups. Now, we have over 400 uh, groups of alumni all over the world, uh, represented every continent, and uh, m most countries across the world, I think, have an alumni group. Uh, the groups manager is going to kill me if that's wrong, but fair enough. Uh, <laughs> Um, so we've migrated all of that out of our bespoke system and into CVCRM, again using built-in technology in CVCRM, using organizations and organization types. And then all that information has again been made searchable on our website uh, using Drupal's views. So just by coming to a page on our website, you can search by uh, location, group location, group title, and it pulls information out of Civi and displays it on our website for people to search. This opens up lots of uh, scope for future development as well. We could have group leaders coming in to update their group's information um, and uh, loads of other exciting things. People managing their own memberships of groups uh, using Civi CRM as well. Groups. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's an indication of how stable our systems are as well, actually. It works. No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> there we go. Groups. Gone again. I think... <laughs> no, we need, we, need the, we need the impactful map. There we go. It's gone. Anyway, there, there was a Google map there. So um, we're pulling all of that information... Uh, we have groups as a contact type in Drupal as well, which has some extra information about the group. Um, and we link those to the organizations in Civi CRM. So at the moment, we do have a bit of a data split. We've got some of the information stored in Civi CRM. I'm not going to turn around to jinx it. And, uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> and some of the other information to do with content, group content, is stored in Drupal. And again, we link these two together through entity reference fields. I think we're using the CiviCRM entity module, which helps us pull information from the CiviCRM contact into the Drupal page. And it means we can do interesting things on the CiviCRM side as well. So on the group page in CiviCRM, we can add blocks in Drupal across the top, immediately linking our administrators to uh, contents like the group's events, the group's news. Have you given up? Oh, it's, no, it's gone. Um, so that was uh, alumni groups. That migration finished um, uh, the last part of last year. And since then, we've been working on uh, sort of the, the major phase of the project, which has been to replace one of our third-party suppliers, which we were using for profile updates and email marketing, um, with uh, the rest of the functionality in Civi CRM. So that went live last week and hopefully is more stable than uh, the projector. Um, it seems to still be running anyway. So um, we've integrated a single sign-on with one of our other third parties, so people can sign in with an existing account. When they sign in, we get a payload of information from uh, the single sign-on, and we automatically match them up to contacts in Civi CRM if we don't already know who they are. So they come in from... Uh, uh, our email for life service. I didn't turn around. Coming from our email for life service, get automatically matched up to their contact record if we didn't know who they are already. And then they can update their details on their profile screen. Haha. <laughs> Ooh, another window. Okay. So you can log in with our, our third party, uh, cantab.net, which is an email for life service. After logging in, that uh, data check happens and you get matched up to your contact in Civi CRM, which is then displayed on your profile page. This is all pulled out using standard Drupal views. And if you wanted to edit any of this information, you can click on one of the links, which takes you through to a Civi CRM standalone profile. It's fairly standard built-in stuff for Civi CRM. Uh, you can change things around, uh, save it, uh, which takes you back to your profile page in Drupal eventually. 
That's something I wanted to show on the next screen. <laughs> Before, these messages didn't come out. If you've saved something in CVCRM, it's gone now. If you save something in CVCRM, the status message doesn't appear in Drupal. It saves itself up till the next time you look at a CVCRM page. So we've written a new module, which is about this much code, um, which takes your CVCRM messages and displays them as Drupal status messages as well. So go and check that out. It's called CVCRM status message. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> there's, there's actually a paid version as well, which is pro on the end. Yeah. <laughs> and that one you can change the color. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so this is um, replacing all of that sort of profile uh, editing and update information, uh, which we were previously paying a company quite a lot of money to do for us. Um, the other side of this is we had to integrate all of these profile updates with our existing office database. So we use CVCRM for all of the online interactions, but our office has another database which it uses to store um, information, lots of other information, lots and lots of other information. Um, so we've had to write a custom data sync, which is all based on uh, CVCRM's hook interf interfaces um, to send data to this, uh, this other system in our office. And likewise, we have a system which puts data back in CVCRM if it updates in the other system. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to do integrations like that. Just, just stick with CVCRM and have one system. Uh, that'll save you a lot of pain. That's gone again. So that was another big part of the project. And finally, we're using, uh, as of now-ish, we're using CVMail for our main email marketing tool as well. So we've pretty much moved everything across now to CVCRM, and our first major mailing will be going out next week using CVMail. So we're just putting the last testing and finishing touches to that. And a few people in the room might get it, and they can let us know how it goes. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed the uh, <laughs> flickering screens to keep you awake during the presentation. Um, I don't know if we can accidentally show all of our contact information on the screens. <laughs> or uh, we can maybe just show the last sl slide and come back. So just to go over a few of the numbers, in, it's been a busy two years for us. This is just one of the things that our office does. Um, that we, as we as the year two uh, implementers and developers have done for the office. So we've got over 300,000 contacts in CVCRM. Um, they've been able to apply for 45 events. We've actually had nearly 5,000 event registrations. We've removed two bespoke systems, which is thousands of lines of code from different programming languages. And we've removed one external supplier, sorry. And we've been giving back as well. So not only are we quite tired, we've 58 commits have been merged in from our pull requests. So we've been giving back what we can to the community when, it's, um, when it would benefit everyone. And there's still a lot of work to do, uh, but, but we're getting there. If you'd like to look at any of this stuff and tell us when it breaks, uh, you can go to philanthropy.cam.ac.uk or the alumni site, which is alumni.cam.ac.uk. And I think that's pretty much it. Thanks. Thank you.